let's start the second part. So next page of our notes, meiosis two. You know it's meiosis two because all of the PMATs have two at the end of it. You're going to notice a lot of similarities to mitosis here because we've done all the massive things. We've done crossing over. We've done independent assortment. So now we know it's in prophase two because we see not one cell, but two cells. And we'll always draw this as two cells so that we can tell the difference between mitosis, pro, um, sorry, mitosis prophase, prophase one, and prophase two. Now in prophase two, the DNA condenses just like prophase. Chromosomes become visible, nucleus disappears, spindle forms, and centrioles move to the poles. Again, this is the exact same stuff that happens in mitosis. The only difference is that these, um, again, chromosomes are unique. And we see two separate cells going through this at the same time. Let's draw. Again, you're going to draw two cells. You need to make sure that you can recognize it. So we need to know prophase two because we're going to draw two cells. Otherwise, it looks very similar sometimes to other ones. We show the nucleus disappearing. We, saw, we, sh we show the spindle fibers being attached to the centrioles. Now, metaphase two, metaphase middle, you got it. We're gonna be lining things up in the middle. And again, chromosomes line up in the middle. And this is where the spindle fibers are gonna attach just like the metaphase that we've known before. So again, we know that this is metaphase two though, because we see two cells both of them having their chromosomes lining up in the middle. Let's draw it. Again, we need to make sure that we're drawing two cells. I like to draw a dotted line just to show, hey, middle, yeah. And again, you can do your coloring later um, and whatnot. Anaphase two. Anaphase away or apart. So this is a copy chromosomes move apart to the opposite ends. And this is where the sister chromatids separate. Remember in anaphase one, we said the homologous chromosomes separate. Sister chromatids separate here. And these are some vocabulary words that we need to know the difference between these two. So as you can see, we have our um, spindle fibers pulling those sister chromatids to the poles. Let's draw it. And again, you can add your colors later. We're almost finished with this part. All right, so now we have telophase two. This is a lot to write in, so you're gonna wanna write sort of very close in it as best you can. Um, if you need to drop down or draw some arrows over, if you run out of room, that's fine. But okay, we have our nuclei reforming. We're going to see four nuclei here. Remember, nucleus, we don't say nucleuses, we say nuclei. The chromosomes are going to uncoil, so eventually they're going to become all messy like we usually see in interphase. Um, the spindle fibers are going to disappear. We're going to see four haploid unique daughter cells. We also call these gametes. And specifically in females, these gametes turn into eggs. In male, these gametes turn into sperm. And this is also where cytokinesis is going to occur. And it's going to occur twice because, well, we need it to split twice because we have, we need to make four cells. Let's draw it. So again, I make sure that I'm showing both because I want to make sure that I know that this is definitely telophase because I can look at this and go, whoa, I'm going to be having four cells. The only thing it could possibly be is telophase two. And I have those arrows pointing in because that's where the cell's going to pinch um, where cytokinesis occurs, the cutting of a cell. I have my nuclei and I'm showing a later phase of telophase two because I didn't want to draw the, the chromosomes anymore. The jumbled mess is occurring. But as you can see in some of our other pictures, we can still see the chromatids that are in the, um, the nuclei. It's just up to you on what you want to draw. All right, let's add that cytokinesis occurs here and we need to know what is going to be formed. So we know that it splits twice and it's gonna form four haploid unique non-identical cells. Now remember that at the end of meiosis one, it formed two unique cells. This one 
is four unique cells. And you can probably guess that we're going to have some questions about this. So we need to remember it. Now, we need to talk a little bit more and define what this genetic variation is occurring, because this is pretty much one of the main parts of meiosis. Um, so first of all, where does genetic variation come from? Let's define crossing over. So this happens during prophase one. It's homologous pairs joined together to form that tetrad. They exchange alleles, aka fragments. That's where those little switching parts of the, chromos uh, the chromosomes occur. And at this point, chromatids are no longer exact duplicates. At this point, not even when you get to, again, uh, independent assortment, these cells are going to become different. It's unique. They're no longer the same to anything. So where does the genetic variation first occur? In prophase one. It continues to occur in metaphase one, too. So in metaphase one, chromosomes line up at the center, and they do it randomly. They're independently assorted. Sorted meaning sorted, and independent meaning random. And I want you to look over this picture. These are all the different possible combinations that could occur here. So you can see how you can get a lot of different combinations occurring. And then on top of that, adding crossing over, you get a variety of different unique cells from this process. And again, it's one of the reasons why siblings don't look exactly alike. Now we're not talking about twins, but again, siblings. Now, instead of doing your practice by yourself, you're going to be doing it together with me. And we're going to brainstorm on, oh my goodness, how do I keep mitosis and meiosis separate? Because it's rough. All right. So you should have this in the bottom of your chart. Let's go on and go through it first. So let's talk about mitosis. All right. So mitosis has a purpose. All right. So we're going to write this down. Its purpose is to make body cells I want you to put somatic cells in there. Somatic is the more scientific word for body cells. This is for growth, repair, replacement, and we just need to divide the nucleus. It starts with one diploid cell. It ends with two identical diploid body cells. So it starts with a diploid, ends with a diploid. How many stages? Four. We just have PMAT. Number of divisions? One after telophase. And that's what we really need to take away and keep track because then we're going to compare that those same sort of things, you know, purpose starts with ends worth number of stages, number of divisions. And we're going to pair that with, again, what's going on with meiosis. Now, one way that we can, we can sort of remember this, mitosis makes my cells. Mitosis makes my cells. Meiosis or meiosis because I am E. So meiosis makes me. Meiosis makes me. And I say by making me, I was talking about I'm a unique individual. You are a unique individual. So that means it's the starting the point of um, making sex cells. Now, is this sexual reproduction completely? No, we're not talking about fertilization. We're talking about just the creation of the possibility of being able to have sexual reproduction. Now, first off, what's the purpose? Well, my um, meiosis makes sex cells, gametes. It starts with one diploid cell. It ends with four unique haploid cells. And there are two divisions here, one at the end of meiosis one and another one at meiosis two. Now let's break down meiosis one and meiosis two because we need to know that those two. And this is going to be a great way to sort of study. All right, so with meiosis one, we know that we have our stages, prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. We don't need to write it out. We know what PMAT is. It starts with one diploid cell. It ends with two haploid cells. And these cells are unique because crossing over and independent assortment has occurred. And we need to write what phases those occur in. Crossing over occurs in P1. Independent assortment occurs in metaphase one. Meiosis, we're going to mirror the same thing because we want to compare happens in prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two starts with two haploid cells. It ends with four haploid cells and these cells are unique. And there's just honestly less occurring because all the genetic variations already occurred. Um, the, you know, everything's pretty much already occurred. They're just continuing with dividing it into smaller cells because we need that. All right, this is complicated. 
So I know that, um, again, we're going to be reviewing over the next two days. Make sure that you have, again, your notes handy. You need to work with this. This is confusing. It is confusing. So that means you need to practice. Rewrite your notes in different ways. Um, make more foldables. Find out what works for you. Um, you're going to be working with your teacher. And remember, come to Biomaster Mondays um, or our review days to make sure that you are ready for um, this quiz that's coming up. Have a great day.